Hello. Um, the rate of inflation is, is something that's never far from the headlines, is it? Um, the speed at which prices are rising on average. Um, we, we, we get worried when the rate of inflation hits four, five, six percent. Uh, in other countries, it's, it's in double digits. In, in Zimbabwe right now, uh, I believe it's something like 11 million percent. And it's just hyperinflation, crazy. But how do we know these figures? I mean, how do we calculate these figures, the inflation rates? Well, in the UK, currently, uh, the CPI, that's the Consumer Price Index, is the, is the measurement of the inflation rate, which is the official uh, measurement of the inflation rate. We also calculate the RPI, the Retail Price Index, and even the RPIX, which is a variation on the Retail Price Index. Um, I want to, in this video, look at how we calculate these rates of inflation and also consider weaknesses uh, in the calculation methods and therefore uh, consider inaccuracies um, uh, when, when, when reading inflation figures. So, uh, broadly speaking, the, these rates of inflation are calculated in the following way. Uh, around about 600, 650 goods and services um, have their prices checked once a month by the National Audit Office. Um, and the prices of these 600, 650 goods and services are checked not just once each month, but on the same day each month they're checked again and again and again in a variety of kinds of outlets. For instance, a cup of coffee might have a very different price uh, from a, a bus station in Glasgow to a, to a trendy cafe in Covent Garden in London. And so it's important that different kinds of outlets are used. So the typical good uh, on the list of 600, 650 goods is calculated uh, sorry, it's price checked again and again and again on the same day every month in a variety of locations and outlets. And in total about 150,000 prices are collected. These are fed into uh, the calculations with weights attached to them which represent the importance of certain goods. So when the price of coffee changes, um, it's more important to us than when the price of shoe polish changes because we spend a larger proportion of our income on coffee than on shoe polish. And so weights are also attached and with these calculations the, the, the final indexed figures are, ca are compared to 12 months earlier and that tells us whether prices rose in those 12 months. Okay, this basket of goods, these 600, 650 goods and services that are used um, vary according to which uh, which calculation we're, we're, we're making. The consumer price index only looks at goods which consumers regularly buy um, from supermarkets, from, from shops, regular purchases. The RPI, retail price index, is a little more expansive and includes things like um, housing costs, maintaining houses, um, and there's a cost associated with rent or mortgage payments. The RPIX is the same as the RPI, but excludes mortgage repayments uh, on, on its calculation. This basket of goods, if I could, if I could uh, sort of make, let you imagine it like, like this, this basket of 650 goods and services, how do we know which are the 650 goods and services which we regularly buy? Well, this is calculated in itself by another survey, the expenditure survey, where 10,000 households are, re are requested to maintain a, a record of how they spend their money over a two-week period and from this information we learn what the average household spends its money on and how much, in what proportion it spends its money on. These 10,000 households that, that, that can, uh, are, the, are the basis of this survey of expenditure represent, uh, are, are chosen not at random but are a real cross-section of the demographics of society. There are rich households, poor households, urban, rural, um, older, younger, young couples, families, individuals, single people, pensioners, a real cross-section, uh, ethnically speaking as well. And, and this provides us with a kind of microcosm or sample of the UK and we can see how the UK on average spends its money. So we can presume, supposedly, that the basket of goods does represent a typical spending pattern of the UK, and from that we um, can calculate the inflation rate. But, uh, and the basket is updated once a year. It used to be every five years, it's now every year. The basket is updated to represent the changing spending patterns of the public. 
Okay, that's how it's calculated, and the figures are published uh, once uh, every month, and we can see from the 12 months leading up to that month whether there has been a rise in prices. But now, let's go through the f four of the weaknesses of this system. Um, so let me just rub this out. And there are four serious weaknesses, and the first one is, I'll just put here, weaknesses. Firstly, there are individual spending patterns. Everyone has their own way of spending their money, and, and no two people are the same. There might be an average, but we don't all conform to this uh, sort of married couple, 2.4 children, half a dog. You know, it, it's not like that. I spend no money on dog food because I don't have a dog, but some people do, and some people will be affected if the price of dog food goes up. I won't be, neither do I smoke, but when tobacco changes price, um, some people uh, suffer from inflation, I don't. Um, so, clearly everyone spends their money in a different way, and none of us are exactly the same uh, in our spending patterns as the, as the average. And so when they publish the, the inflation figures for the average basket of goods, Actually, my spending is slightly different, and my true inflation rate for my spending might be either higher or lower than that average. It certainly won't be exactly on the average. That's a weakness. A second weakness is just sheer calculation errors. How easy can it be to collect 150,000 prices for 650 different goods all on the same day? It can't happen, and so there are clearly there, there, there's, there's, there's lack of data, there's um, misrepresent, misrepresentations and miscalculations in the data, and this all feeds into the overall inaccuracy of, 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 the, uh, of the calculation of the inflation rate. Two more, um, two more weaknesses. The third weakness is the expenditure survey absences. 10,000 households are asked to record their spending patterns, but 10,000 households don't reply. Uh, on average, about 70 to 80 percent of people re reply. And the, the lack of information from certain households distorts the construction of the basket of goods. Now, it's been shown that amongst those who, who are most likely not to reply to the family expenditure survey are the very rich and certain ethnic minorities. And this distorts what is truly the average spending uh, pattern of, of a UK average household. And, and that leads into inaccuracy in our overall calculation of inflation. And finally, again, the expenditure survey absences and um, delay in updating the basket. I said that the basket is updated once a year, but once a year isn't really good enough because after 10, 11 months, we might be spending our money in a very different way, but we're still using a basket that describes our spending pattern from 10 or 11 months earlier. The way that things change, new things come onto the market very quickly, new products, especially technological products, and, and we stop spending uh, very quickly on, on, on certain products. Uh, maybe there's a health scare about a product or something, but this is not reflected until the basket is next updated and uh, consequently this leads to inaccuracy in the calculation of inflation as well. Nevertheless, it's important that we calculate inflation rates as accurately as possible uh, because it's of course a key uh, macroeconomic objective of government is to keep inflation low and uh, people need to know what their money is truly worth. There's no point merely knowing a numerical value of your, of, of your money. You need to know what it's truly worth, what you can get for your money. And through inflation, we can see how quickly the power of our money is being eroded. So it's important that we know the inflation rate, despite the weaknesses in its calculation. Okay? Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was useful. Bye-bye.